What is going on guys and as always welcome back to another video and if you guys watched a previous video relating to the sway bar installation that we did on the rear end of this 2014 Mustang you will know that we are making a mod list for this car. We're going to be going over interior, we're going to be going over exterior, we're going to go over suspension and the piss poor motor mods that I have already on this car at the moment. We're not going to be going over anything that I have for going on in the future reference, we're just going to be going over things I currently have on the car now. And to give you guys some advice going into today's video that I feel like I needed to share to everybody because I experienced this today and I feel like everyone needs to know this and it was like something that I'm always going to hold on to forever and I hope you guys do too. One thing I ended up learning today is when I was heading home from work, I ended up going home to go see my little sister. Get in my lunch and as I'm walking out the door, she tells me, as always, with the biggest, kindest heart any other human could possibly have, she's like, I love you, I hope you have a great rest of your day. You know, keep up the good work, you're doing so great. And the one thing that I'll always hold on to me is she told me, don't eat drugs. So, don't eat drugs, anybody. Please enjoy today's video and we're gonna be going over all the mods I have on the car right now. A lot of questions I get on this car is relating to the front end. This front end I believe is a little bit different compared to other front ends you might see on other Mustangs, just a little bit, nothing too, too insane. And this front end I believe in my opinion is a little bit different than the rest because I ended up going my own route by making some of my own parts and doing my own things like and more of a character that flows with me. And some of the things I end up doing though, and the one would go with straight into it, the biggest question I get is the front lip on this car. So this white front splitter with the dress up hardware on top is actually a Roush front splitter that I don't know if it's an OEM style, like lip or if it's just an aftermarket style front lip, but I ended up just getting it all black and I ended up painting it white just because I wanted it to flow with the rest of the car. And this front splitter that I have here, this whole black piece that goes all the way across, I actually made that custom. I believe this was quarter inch ABS plastic. That I believe it was like a 48 by like 92 inch sheet of ABS plastic. That was around a little over $100, $120. And I was able to get that whole front end to be able to match up exactly how I want it. And the only reason why I ended up making my own front end instead of buying one, is mainly for the fact that I didn't want to spend a boatload of money on something that I felt like I could have made myself and saved a lot more money. And that's exactly what I did. Plus I needed the right specs for it, if that makes sense, because what I ended up doing here is I needed this side piece of the splitter wider than the actual front lip. And the ones I ended up seeing online would cave in and flow with the bumper. And I didn't want that because the main reason why is because I wanted to make this little canard thing on the side, mud flap, whatever you want to call it, to the side of the wheel to give it more of a wider effect. And I ended up actually using 116 inch ABS plastic with a little bit of white vinyl on here to kind of match the color of the car, which it really does it in person. It's not the exact color, but it does flow with the rest of the car to give it that more wider front end effect. It looks really aggressive and I absolutely love it. I'm glad I was able to do it. And as for these right here, these are actually custom as well. This is actually center board that I believe is also a quarter inch as well. And this stuff is not really meant to go on cars. So that stuff's not really made to go on cars by any means, but I just did it anyway because it was very cheap. I got it for free actually. I got it out of the trash. I ended up cutting it and painting it and shaping it to the way I want it. But it, at first it was for looks, but it ended up coming into where I actually had to use it because I didn't really want to scrape up this front splitter anymore. And like the whole underside of it, it does it's not bad, but I didn't want to scrape up any more than I already do already. But it does happen occasionally here and there over speed bumps or little dips in the road. So I ended up making these and these are actually a big inspiration off the Dodge Challengers that you see on the road that have little front yellow cover on their front lip of their cars so they don't get damaged during shipping or whatever the reason is for. So that kind of gave me the idea of that and I felt like it gave it a lot more wider front aggressive feel to it. So that's why I added that as well. And it took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. And I feel like honestly, this flows really well. And it's a little bit different from the rest of the front ends that you see on a stock body Mustang. And to go with these, these again were also for looks as well for quite some time. They look like shit at the moment because they're a little bit chipped up and they don't look as good as they were if you were to see them from here because it looks like there's nothing wrong. You get closer and you start seeing all the imperfections, which I shouldn't be showing you guys because this is a mod list video, but honestly, I'm showing you guys the details of this car and that's the reason why I'm making this video. But these were originally for looks and the reason why I ended up actually continuing to use these because I'm not really a big fan of the rods, believe it or not. The rods look good, but honestly, I could live without them and I feel like it looks a lot better without it. I ended up actually adding this to give it a little bit more of aggression and also for actually practicality. But to get back into what I was talking about, the main reason why I added this on here is to actually hold this full front splitter up because this ABS plastic is not too, too heavy, but it is heavy enough to cause this front lip to sag. And so this does hold up to the bumper of the car, which, which just fell out. 
I don't even know what that is that just fell out. Awesome, whatever that was, it just broke. Awesome. See, I can't even get through a video without something falling apart on this car. But going into the other parts that we have on this car is also a GT500 front grill. I wanted to have that open effect on there because I love being able to show the radiator and everything is behind it, even though there's absolutely nothing to see. But I look at me that open effect with a lot more airflow and I did the exact same thing with the bottom. I actually deleted the whole front bottom grill itself because I actually didn't like the bottom grill because I felt like honestly, it didn't give enough airflow in it and there was just so many holes that were actually occupied. It was just covered up. It looked gross, it looked ugly, and especially in the sun, I didn't like it. So I ended up actually using some mesh on here. It's not the best, cleanest looking job, but it definitely looks good from a far distance. This whole car needs to be cleaned up, so I'm not even stressing too much on how the small little details work, because I, so I do daily drive this, so it's not really my top concern. But if you guys haven't already, and you guys are still stuck in this video, please subscribe down below and like this video if you find anything that's interesting, and if you find anything that you found really, really cool, if you have any questions about it, you guys know exactly where to leave them, and that's in the comment section down below. To get back into this video, I also added some white side marker lights on the car that I ended up getting off Amazon for I believe it was like $30. And they shine white and that's exactly what I was going for because I love white lights. White lights have been a big thing for me and I cannot stand yellow lights because they just look gross and remind me of the library for whatever reason or like a book that has yellow pages and they smell like piss. I don't know why that makes me think of it but I just don't like yellow lights. And I always get the questions about the bottom fog lights. I actually ended up making those myself. A lot of the stuff I have on the car currently now I made myself because I really don't like buying stuff unless I absolutely have to or it comes to the point where it broke enough where I'm like, all right, I was actually spending money to go do it. Money. And so I ended up adding those fog lights on there, not for the main reason why for looks, but I also thought to myself, well, there's an open hole there. I don't see anything online that really has any options to fill in that hole because I really didn't like the cover that was on there for the original fog lights that were supposed to go on the very top part of here, which I left opened up. And I plan on using that open hole for future reference for better airflow at some sort. But as for the bottom fog lights, I actually added these bottom fog lights because I had tint on the car. These are two LED strips. I'm not going to go into detail exactly of what I have done to this because that would be a whole other video if I was to do so. But I ended, originally ended up having tint on the headlights and these were way too dark to the point where I actually had to add those lights to shine the road in front of me. So right now, what I have in front of me are Aventus 20 inch wheels. These are 235 3520 on an eight inch rim. I don't know exactly what model it is and I get this question all the time. Hey yo, what rim model do you have? Where can I get it? Where can I get this? The only thing I can answer for anybody who's watching this video and wants to know, I ended up getting these rims off of a company from called Swap Motorsports in Las Vegas. They do have a stamp on there of some sort. I really don't know what the stamp means. It has this random stamp right here. And But these are Adventus wheels. If that helps you guys any, the company's name Adventus. And to go on to the inside of the wheel that I have over here, I have R1 Concept sl slotted road. Rotors. I didn't want to go with the slotted and the drilled rotors because for whatever reason I didn't feel like I needed the drilled rotors and I didn't want to have to run into issues where one day it could have possibly cracked on me. So I ended up going with the slotted to be a little bit different because everyone always goes with slotted and drilled. So I wanted to just go slotted and I ended up painting these calipers red. I mean, it's not the most perfect job. I ended up spray painting it with whatever red caliper paint that I could find at the time. And honestly, it holds up really well and it pops out like a sore thumb when you look at it on the side of the car. And I absolutely love it. It gives that a little bit of a contrast that you would look for when looking at a detailed vehicle. I'm already liking how this video is going already because the last video I was kind of all over the place clicking the record button, not recording, recording, not recording because I was just screwing up all the time. This one's gone very smoothly and I'm already, you can see I'm already into like 12 minutes and 45 seconds into this video. And it's going really, really well. Well, and I'm happy you guys are sticking around if you guys still are. Other things I also add on the side of the car that you might be able to see or you just haven't seen at all is this right here. This is a sun visor that I have on the side of the window and this thing was also a pain in the ass to put on here and this was about $40 within itself as well. This thing wasn't really too too expensive in my opinion. I got it off Amazon for my birthday and this thing actually doesn't really do too too much considering it doesn't really rain out here in Vegas. Well I don't see a lot of Mustangs have it so that's another reason why I got it. I like being a little bit different from majority of what other people do. That's kind of the reason why I also went with this back wing back here because a lot of people go with louvers. I cannot stand the louvers. I don't know why they only look good on the classic Mustangs to me but for as for the new ones, I just can't stand them. They just don't look good to me in my opinion. And there's some builds in some cases where I'm like, all right, that flows really, really well. But to me, I wanted to have a little bit more flair in the back because honestly, this car from the rear end without the wing just looks like a bean. It looks like a 350Z in my opinion with the round rear end. And I thought to myself, will the wing look good when I put it on? And honestly, I was blown away by the expectation of it. I feel like it flows really, really well. And it gives it that little gurney flap flare on the back and it looks really, really good. 
And in my opinion, I keep saying really, really good because I think it's because I'm being stereotypical because it's my car. But other than that, I feel like anybody who's looking for that wing, it's about $80 on Amazon. It really wasn't that expensive. I guarantee you could probably find it online for a more expensive price. But this originally came the same color as this, the black tint looking feel. But I ended up painting it white to give it a flow with the rest of the car. And as for these side skirts here, as I told you guys earlier, center board is not what you're supposed to use when it comes to modifying your vehicle because that stuff will warp and it gets scratched up and bent and just break. It's just not the best pieces to use unless it's smaller pieces like how I use the front. But as I used here, I tried my best to make myself a side skirt for temporary until one day I decided to change it. And I actually ended up having to use two pieces on here and it doesn't really look as good as it could. I know I needed to use ABS plastic, but I didn't have that at the moment. So I just said, screw it, I'm gonna go with something else. And so I ended up using center board. The center board on here, I kind of gave myself a different effect on here with a little carbon fiber accent. Right here that I saw that was, could have been in use. So I had some leftover pieces left over. So I ended up putting this on here to give it a little bit more of a character effect. And I let this side skirt on the side turn into like a triangle where it wasn't just so boxy and square it flares with the front of the car to the back end of the car and as you go to the front to the back as I told you guys earlier with these mud flaps or whatever you want to call them in the front that I was telling you guys earlier you go move to the back and I have the same thing in the rear end to flow with the back of the car and these are actually mud flaps that are reversed to the other side with the same material the 1 16th inch ABS plastic and I, the only reason why I didn't add the mud flaps on the back was mainly because I wanted to show the rear tire in the rear showing how much meat is in the rear end of the car and you can't really tell too too much on camera but I absolutely love being able to show the rear tire on the car and to also go on to the rear end of the car, uh, this is also center board as well. Wow, I have a lot of center board on this car. And it's really not the best material to use, as I keep saying, but it works for what I need to use it for on smaller aspects. And right here, I ended up flaring this out. I saw there was an option for it online, but I ended up saying, screw it, I'm gonna build my own. And I ended up actually painting the side of it white and the top part of it gloss black, which it doesn't really look gloss black because it's absolutely disgusting with dirt and grime everywhere, which I shouldn't be touching. Touch. Don't touch. But it gives it that little flared effect so it matches from the, si the back rear to the side front. And I like everything flowing in a continuous manner. That's just how I am. I have OCD over that. I, to go on with the rear end of the car, I have a GC500 rear OEM spoiler that I end up getting off American Muscle for I believe around $200 and it's wrapped gloss black with a carbon fiber rear gurney flap. But maybe one day I'll change this. I have a spoiler in my mind and it's hard not to want to change it. And if you know what spoiler I want, you'll know if you've been around me. But other than that, I do like the spoiler. I like how much it flares out to the side and that's the main reason why I got it because it overlaps the trunk. But I have a Flowmaster muffler exhaust. I ended up making an ABS plastic rear diffuser and it looks good in my opinion in the rear end when you look at it on the side it's kind of hard to tell on camera so another thing i added onto rear end of this car that you guys might all really really enjoy and i actually ended up making a video on this if you want to check it out you guys might enjoy it's a kind of a love hate type deal and i've had it on the car for a while and that is having the custom style tail light so these aren't special tail lights by any means but all i did is added electrical tape on here and just made it to where it kind of give it a different flare effect to give it more of like a classy style look and i don't like using that word but it's the best way i could describe it and if you guys are interested in that video i'll put the link up in this video right now. And to go on to the inside of the car, even though it's a little bit messy at the moment, I actually have the premium package. So I was able to get the leather seats. I have the leather pieces on the side of the door. The Mustang logo lights up and also other random features as well, as you can see. So when you turn it on, you get the Mustang logo. You get... And so to go on, what I have with the inside of this car, I have carbon fiber door pieces on the inside of this door handle. I have it around the top. I have it around the side in the middle. I also added it in here as well because I felt like it flowed really well in that spot as well. And also near the window switches. I'm having to hold my camera right now on my phone because it's getting dark outside and, and so to go on i also have carbon fiber all around the dash and i feel like it looks really really well and i originally ended up having it white all the way across but i ended up getting sick of that and i wanted to try something more mature and that's why i went with the carbon fiber accents i ended up going crazy with it and there's still a lot more i'd love to do i also added some switches on here as well to give it more of a character effect and to give you that need for speed style mustang look that you might have seen in the movie if you ever watched the need for speed movie you'll know what i'm talking about i thought about making a video on this because there's a lot of people out there that probably saw the movie and they're like i would love to do that where do i buy the material how do i put it in i was thinking about making a video so if you guys are interested in that leave a comment in the comment section down below and i might even make a video on that but this goes all the way around the dash. You can get any color you want, but I ended up picking out white because I felt like white flowed with the rest of the car because it's obviously a white and black styled vehicle. And I also have red accents to hint again with the brake calipers. And that's kind of where all the red flowed with the rest of the car. And that's the reason why I went with red was mainly because the brake calipers were painted red. So I ended up going red crazy and I ended up painting things red and little accents of the car. So I have like three primary colors. I have the white, I have the black, and I also have the red. My three favorite colors, not really. I also have carbon fiber or the cup holders go. In this you know area nothing too too crazy as you can see i have a carbon fiber steering wheel with the carbon fiber logo right in the middle where the horn is and also the side pieces as well <laughs> 
side pieces. And to continue with all the other little random things that you might see throughout the rest of the car, one thing that you guys will not be able to miss, and I guarantee you guys have already looked at it, and you're like, damn, I really, really want it if you found interest in it, is the screen for this car. This is a Phoenix automotive screen that I got for around $405. And this is one of my favorite pieces on the car. It's one of the, I wouldn't say it was the cheapest, but it really modernizes the interior of this vehicle. Because if you own a Mustang or at least are looking into one, you'll know that the interiors are very outdated and basic. And so I wanted to upgrade this a little bit. And I still have a video on this as well in my channel if you want to check that out as well. And so going from the inside of the car from the three switches I have, this one controls the lights over on the dash. This one is for my grill lights. And also this one's just there for whatever reason. But I'm going to leave the grill light on so you guys can see exactly what it looks like. And I only have it in the color white. And the only reason I have it in the color white, and you guys could probably guess it, is because the car is white. And so it looks like that during the nighttime. And I'm actually glad I made this video during the nighttime or at least during sunset because during the daytime, you definitely couldn't see it. But I do have an HPS cold air intake. I ended up painting a lot of these hose lines red again to give a little bit of contrast to the rest of the vehicle to black, white, and red. Throttle body spacer I ended up getting off eBay. And to finish off what we have on the inside of this engine bay, I have some shorty headers on the inside of this car that are made from DNA Garage. And I also have a Diablo tune on the car as well. Making our way towards the underside of the car, we have an adjustable rear sway bar from Steeda, as well as an adjustable rear pan hard bar from ULMI, which goes really, really well with the ULMI rear lower control arms. And to complement that, we also have a BMR pan hard bar brace that complements the pan hard bar. And to wrap everything up all in the suspension category, we also have race and coilovers. Definitely got dark really, really quick. I'm having to use my phone light again to be able to show you guys what I have going on on the car. I appreciate everyone who was able to stick around this video. It really means a lot to me for the people who do stick around. I love interacting with you guys. I love when you guys like up the videos. I love when you guys follow because it means that it just really motivates me to keep moving forward. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one.